I loved WandaVision. It was very, very good. The magic show bit was one of my favorite MCU scenes. It was a very marvelous scene. Episode 6 with Evan Peters was super fun. The song everyone liked was also good, naturally. So now that I've spent a full 15 seconds talking about what I liked, it's time for some criticism. The finale didn't work for me, all right? And I'm not alone. Don't get me wrong. Ship of Theseus, Vision Fight, the end, this costume, all excellent. But the bigger picture. Some of the themes and the way WandaVision chose to wrap up some plot lines didn't feel worthy of the episodes that came before it. And I'm not of the opinion that it is less interesting because it falls back into the Marvel Cinematic Universe formula. Yeah, it loses some of the things that makes the show interesting, but I love a good MCU movie and I love a good Dick Van Dyke show pastiche. So this was for me. I just don't believe the finale really delivered. So I am going to propose some changes to episode nine and the end of episode eight of WandaVision that I believe would build a stronger finale. But first, I need to talk about some of my issues. First off, I think the finale showed us that the show didn't really know what to do with Agnes. It seemed to waffle between she's a villain and she's a mentor. Even in episode eight, she walked a very fine line. Seemed like she might be genuinely interested in helping Wanda, even after her song. But then at the last minute, Agatha switches gears, flies in the air in her new bad guy outfit and chokes Wanda's kids. But then she lets the kids go right after, like why bother? Just wanted to look extra evil for a second. But then after flying around and shooting some lasers, by the end of the ninth episode, Wanda realizes that it might actually be good if Agatha is around in the future, like she usually is in the comics, so Agatha is mind wiped and just left in Westview. It's so inconsistent. And in an interview with Jack Schaefer, the series' head writer, you can see how Agatha ended up this way. She says, quote, In the early stages, she functioned as more of a mentor. And then, as we got into the room and started really legitimately breaking the episodes, it became clear that having more of a proper antagonist would serve the structure really well, so she increasingly moved in that direction. But we didn't lose sight of the potential for her to be a mentor and a teacher and a partner and a confidant. All of that still infused all of their scenes together. And we like to say that there's a version of the story where Wanda and Agatha walk off into the sunset together, you know? You could kind of see it. And I think that led to better writing for the two of them. Those gray tones in there. And I don't think that those gray tones worked as well as they could have. Because you figure if it did, Wanda probably would not have needed to just reset Agatha to the mentor role so that she could return in a future movie and it would make sense. Then, there was the issue of the townsfolk. The Westview residents and their relationship with Wanda. I would say this line, They'll never know what you sacrificed for them. That wouldn't change how they feel about me proves that WandaVision doesn't quite know how it feels about Wanda and the townsfolk. Yeah, she kinda didn't plan all of this, but also, Vision gave Wanda plenty of hints that something was wrong and Wanda didn't care. He explicitly tells Wanda at the end of episode 5 that the people are in pain, so this should not be a huge surprise to Wanda in episode 9. There was an interesting article on Vox by Emily Vanderwerf called Wanda Vision's disappointing finale and the problem with demanding justice in fiction. In it, Emily explains, quote, The protagonist of any story takes both moral and immoral actions across the course of that story, and this storyteller's responsibility is to understand which actions are which, and, more importantly, to signal to the audience that they've actually thought about this. We will go along with the worst, most venal protagonist alive if we know the storyteller knows their protagonist is awful. The second that level of understanding starts to slip, however, it becomes much easier to doubt the storyteller knows what they're doing. We want our gods to be just. We know they aren't always, but we want them to know when they've screwed up. And you can see that in the dialogue. How the townspeople feel about Wanda doesn't really matter. It's what Wanda did to them, how she made them feel. Wanda was at least somewhat responsible for the torment she caused the town, but that line shifts the subject of the sentence from Wanda to the townspeople. It isn't about what Wanda did, it's about how they felt about it. I've seen the suggestion on Reddit that the line should be changed to, it doesn't change what I did, 
I think that creates a Wanda that absolutely understands the consequences of her actions, and even when another character tries to comfort her, Wanda can't help but feel guilty, like she should in that moment. Maybe not completely guilty, but at least kind of guilty. And then, last issue with the finale, it felt a little disjointed. Wanda was doing her thing, Vision was doing his thing, no one was really interacting with each other, and the kids and Monica, we're not going to talk about them, but yeah. And I don't think the finale was originally intended to work this way. There were scenes that were cut. Characters that could not make reshoots because of a certain public health event. And I sympathize with the team behind WandaVision. That being said, someone watching the show in five years won't think about those background considerations. They'll just think, eh, I really dig it. And that's reasonable. So what do you do about that? Agnes, karma, and bringing everyone together. What does an ideal version of this finale look like? Well, I have an answer. A rewritten final episode with a few big changes all radiating from one admittedly big change. A change that I will explain as we get to it. So, I'm going to walk you through my rewritten WandaVision finale, explain my changes, and hopefully by the end of it, at the very least, you'll have a fun bit of headcanon to hold on to. So here's my pitch. It begins at the end of episode 8. Agatha and Wanda finish their therapy session. And instead of being outside in the middle of this street, they finish the episode in the room that they started it in. And Agnes says a version of her line. I knew it. You were hiding something, even from yourself. Once in a generation, a witch is born who is able to tap into a great and terrible power. You knew you were dangerous, but you can't keep it buried anymore. You are not just a housewife or even just an Avenger. You are the Scarlet Witch. <gasps> Episode 9 picks up right there. Wanda says, Where are my children? They're safe, but you need to listen. You don't know what you've done. All magic comes with a price. What do you mean? I mean exactly that. To bring your husband back to life, you needed to give a part of yourself. You need to stop this now, before it's too late. And destroy everything I've built here? My children? It's the only way. Otherwise, all of reality is in danger. Wanda, please. Thought it wasn't Wanda anymore. Maybe I have been holding back. But no one is going to take this from me. Not again. Wanda runs for the exit, kicks down the door. And as Agatha begins to grab her with her magic, Wanda is able to get one hand out of the door... Wanda uses that hand to cast a hex that knocks Agatha down. Then Wanda's eyes glow red and she creates an explosion that shakes the entire house and buries Agatha. Feet sticking out, obviously. Wanda grabs the Darkhold and runs out of the basement back to her own house. This also causes the hex itself to flicker, giving Hayward's forces and White Vision enough time to cross into Westview. Then we check on Vision. He notices that something is going on at Agnes's house and flies over, but before he can get to Wanda and the kids, Vision is caught by White Vision. They fight, and White Vision defeats Vision, knocking him out. White Vision brings Vision to Hayward. Hayward seals Vision in the restraint that we first saw White Vision in, and turns on a machine that begins to drain Vision's power. Hayward says, hey, It's kind of poetic. It seems like you're the only thing that can hurt her. So, we're going to take your power and use it to free these people. Then, Hayward leaves White Vision to guard regular Vision as Hayward and his troops make their way into town. Wanda feels something is wrong with Vision, so she flies over to him and finds the sword forces. We cut back to Monica, who feels the earthquake underneath her because she is in Agnes' house and uses it to knock out Pietro and freeze him. Remembers that he's Ralph Boner. And then... Monica runs out of the house, sees Wanda fly away, and finds Agatha on the street. What happened to you? She did. No, Wanda wouldn't do that. That's not Wanda. Not all of her. What? I saw her memories. When Wanda came to Westview, she unknowingly cast a spell that created this barrier. But Wanda also created Vision. I thought she reanimated Vision's corpse. No. Wanda took a part of herself and used it to recreate the vision as she saw him. Noble, kind, selfless. But the problem is, when she gave those parts of herself to vision, Wanda lost them. So that means this Wanda that we're dealing with is nothing but 
rage, jealousy, and fear. And the longer Wanda spends away from Vision, the more those emotions take over. And she is going to unleash her power on whoever tries to take this life away from her. Like she did with me. Hayward. I saw him. In her memories. He has the real Vision. But he's the one that told us Wanda broke in and took the Vision. He lied. I don't know why, but if he's here, everyone is in trouble. Can you stop her? Me? No. The only thing that can stop Wanda is vision. Her vision. Well, where, where is he? Give me a second. Agatha closes her eyes and Astral projects through town. She sees Hayward and a small sword army, then goes even further and finds Vision in a holding cell being guarded by White Vision. Hayward has him, captive, and he's trying to drain Vision's power. If you can distract Wanda... I'll break into sword and free vision. On your own? Monica looks over and sees the kids spying out of the window of their house. I think I can find some help. So that's how I am squaring Wanda's karma. This Wanda is both not completely responsible and completely responsible. Wanda is being selfish and disregarding the safety of the Westview citizens. She is the bad guy. But Wanda is also a victim of losing her own better judgment. She separated the angel and the devil on her shoulder. Vision became the angel, which means all that's left for Wanda is the devil. And while Wanda and her vision are together, this isn't an issue. But when they're separated, Wanda goes full bad. And there's a grand tradition in the history of both comic book and magical storytelling of splitting a hero into their good and evil versions of themselves. The Jekyll and Hyde story, kind of. Nick Spencer Spider-Man did this recently. Peter Parker was literally split into one version that was great power and one that was great responsibility. Superman 3 has a similar plotline with Black Kryptonite splitting Clark into two versions, one nice guy and one jerk. And of course, the pinnacle of storytelling, the Jackie Chan Adventures, featured the tiger talisman that made a crybaby Jackie and a mean Jackie. In those stories, the hero is able to be both a huge jerk and be completely redeemed. After all, we all have selfish impulses, like we're only human. So if a character is split in half against their will, we can't really judge them for doing things we might do ourselves if we were acting without inhibitions. In Wanda's case, choosing to keep the town hostage rather than let her husband and children die is it necessarily the right choice for a good guy to make, especially when the husband and children don't really exist, but it is the kind of choice that they may want to make. So if we split her character, these actions make sense. We get to have our cake and eat it. Wanda is not completely responsible, but Wanda does get to be the bad guy, and what she is doing is an honest expression of her character. Back in town, Wanda confronts Hayward. What are you doing to him? This can end if you just release the people. We'll let him go, and you can go wherever you want. No one needs to get hurt. You aren't taking my home from me. This creates a standoff. Wanda and Hayward's forces are about to fight when Agatha appears. Wanda, let me talk to you. I have to show you something. Agatha leads Wanda away from Hayward. Once Wanda is out of the way, Monica and the twins, in their costumes, sneak into the center of town. The twins fight with the guards while Monica breaks into the truck where the vision is being held. Monica sees the container and makes a move for it, but she is stopped by white vision. Back to Agatha and Wanda. Agatha has a plan. She brings Wanda into the center of town. Agatha says, You aren't the villain, Wanda. You don't know who I am. Maybe not, but they do. And the townspeople wake up and flock to Wanda. They beg her to release them. Agatha says, You don't need to do this, Wanda. Just release them. Think of their children. But Wanda pushes them all away. What about my children? My life? Why do I always need to sacrifice? It isn't fair. Then Wanda mind crushes Agatha and they have their big fight in the air. Then we cut back to Monica and White Vision. He tells her, Stand down and there won't be trouble. And Monica says, there's already trouble, and goes for Vision. Then Monica has a super short fight with White Vision. He tries to subdue Monica, but to her surprise, she goes intangible, one of her usual superpowers. 
Then Monica hits White Vision with an energy blast from her hand and he flies out of the truck, another one of her usual superpowers. Monica rescues Vision and he wakes up. She explains the situation to Vision. We need to reunite you and Wanda before she destroys everything. Vision flies out of the truck, but gets caught again by White Vision. They have their tussle, and that leads into the Ship of Theseus conversation, which I definitely want to keep. Monica can find the kids, maybe help them beat up Hayward, because screw Hayward. And Darcy in the original WandaVision finale has three lines and then leaves. But honestly, I like it better if Darcy is never there. And at the end, someone asks, hey, what happened to Darcy? And she's just still waiting at that stoplight. But then, Wanda fully realizes her magical destiny goes Scarlet Witch and runes up the Hex, which depowers Agatha. And before Wanda can attack the defenseless Agatha, Vision appears and talks Wanda down. Now I would love it if Vision said, in that lovely Paul Bettany voice, Beshrew your eyes. They have overlooked me and divided me. For half of me is yours, the other half yours. And Wanda continues, Mine own. I would say, but if mine, and Vision finishes, then yours. And so, all yours. And Wanda falls out of the air, lands in Vision's arms. Vision lands with Wanda on the ground. They grab the kids and go home. The landing thing is kind of a callback to episode one. Otherwise, the ending is the same. The hex shrinks, Vision and the kids disappear, Wanda leaves. I'd like Wanda to see Agatha on her way out too. This Agatha is a good guy, so she does not need to be mind wiped. Wanda can just ask what Agatha's gonna do. And Agatha says, well, you know, I've been around the block and I don't mind it here. Might stay for a little, play the nosy neighbor. If you need me, I'll find you. And the line I pick for Vision is from the play The Merchant of Venice. It was written by William Shakespeare, who Billy happens to be named after. I actually read the line for the first time in Tom King's Vision comic, issue 12. Scarlet Witch quotes it to Viv, Vision's daughter. Basically, the quote means, Your eyes have bewitched me and split me in two. One half is yours, and the other half is yours. I would say my own, but if it's mine, then it's yours. So it's all yours, which mirrors Wanda's spell and this conflict within her, giving in and entering this relationship with Vision only to lose him, and she believes lose some of herself. But Vision will always be a part of Wanda. Hex Vision was love persevering, and when she hears that line from the Merchant of Venice, because maybe at some point Vision got really into Shakespeare and loaned that play to Wanda, Wanda realizes that the best parts of Vision are inside her, so she can end the Hex and move on. Also, Hayward should be the Red Skull because... <laughs> Last thing, someone asked on the Patreon what happens to White Vision in my version, mostly the same. After the Ship of Theseus conversation, White Vision's mind is awakened and he leaves the town to go, I'm assuming get an artificial power source or something that'll help him last for a while. In the comics, Vision's powered by the Solar Gem, which is a separate thing from any of the Infinity Stones, and I'm assuming he's gonna have to find something like that because the residual energy from that drone Wanda shot down doesn't seem like it's gonna last him a lifetime. I assume he'll get something like that from either Bruce Banner or the scientists in Wakanda. And then who knows, maybe we see him again in Young Avengers if they make a movie or show based on that. As a mentor, he could be fun there. And if you, like either Vision, want to expand your mind, I would highly recommend this video's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is science and math enrichment learning. On Brilliant, you take short, challenging quizzes on whatever topics you want. And it isn't only the super technical things like geometry or programming, although those are both there. I, for example, took courses on logic and search engines. What I love about Brilliant is either you get the quiz right, in which case you feel awesome, or Brilliant walks you through the correct answer so you learn the way to solve the problems and learn the concepts. And to support this channel and learn more about Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash nandovmovies and sign up for free. And the first 200 people who go to that link will get 20% off their annual premium subscriptions. Go check them out.
as always, first of all, I have to give a humongous thank you to everyone who continues to support the channel on Patreon and all the new people that support the channel on Patreon every month because we always get new people. You guys are amazing. If you want to see your name up here, get access to videos early, other cool stuff, you know, chuck it a buck or two at patreon.com slash movies. You have no idea how helpful it is for me. Also, definitely listen to the podcast Mostly Nitpicking. It is a podcast that I host with my friends DJ and Diggins. Every week we pick apart a piece of pop culture by looking exclusively at the details. We have a very long episode coming out very soon about the Zack Snyder Justice League Snyder Cut. We'll have episodes about Kong vs. Godzilla, Black Widow, all of the big releases as they happen this year. We are at Nitpicking Pod on Twitter, and you can listen to us wherever you listen to your podcasts. And in honor of Sparky, the Nebula Plus segment for this video is about the MCU pets, the ones that exist already and the ones that I think might show up in the future, including the specific one that I think is non-negotiable. We 100% absolutely have to add this pet soon. You can watch that version of the video on Nebula right now. Last thing, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, all that stuff. I am Movies on all of those platforms. Also, want to give a shout out to everyone that proof watches my videos. One thing I do on Twitter is once I've finished a video, uploaded it, but I haven't made it live yet, I will put out a tweet that just says, anybody want to proof watch a video, DM me. And then a couple of you guys will DM me. I'll delete the tweet so I don't get a million DMs. And then I send the proof watchers the link just so they can watch it and catch some small mistakes that I might have missed just because I've seen this video a billion times and like I become kind of blind to some of the mistakes. And then either I will make the video live or I'll make those small changes. So I, I can't name all of you, but thank you all so much. Anybody that's ever proof watched a video. If you want to proof watch videos in the future, I would imagine the best way to do it would be to turn some sort of notifications on for tweets and then send me a DM once the tweet goes out. That's all I got. Stay safe. I'll see you guys next time.